The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich, yet delightfully mild. It's delicious, and it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality Velveeta, made only by Kraft. <laughs> Well, it's evening at the great Gildersleeve's house, about the time when things should be settling down. But when there are active twins in the house at the explore, reach, and pull over everything stage, it keeps a young mother pretty busy. Be still, Linda. How can I get you into your night? <coughs> Unky, you'll have to keep an eye on Ronnie. I have my hands full. Yeah, all right, Marjorie. Just a minute. <coughs> you'll have to put down your newspaper. He's under the coffee table. <coughs> Good, then we know where he is. Larry, don't touch that. Hey, what's he after? Your cigar. Oop. Ronnie, give me that. Let go. You, well, you can't have it. Cigars stunt your growth. Look at me. They're into everything, aren't he? Yeah, they're cute. Now, Linda, you sit here in the middle of the floor while I take care of Ronnie. Now, where's his nighty? Ronnie, what did you do with it? He was trying to stuff it in Bronco's hat a moment ago. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> now, Margie, perhaps he's planning to go out this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mort, this isn't funny. If you had to put twins to bed every evening, they're little night owls, that's what they are. <laughs> Linda, don't touch the piano scar. <laughs> Yay, you can't pull yourself up by that. You watch the bass. <laughs> Now see what you did. Yeah, anyway, it didn't frighten her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'll pick up the pieces. I just don't think I can take it much longer. Bronco? I don't know why the mother has to do everything. No, Marjorie. Bronco! Honey, oh, what is honey? Bronco Thompson, can't you take a little responsibility for these children? Me? Oh, yeah, sure. Why? Bronco, their mother's having a little trouble this evening. A little trouble? Oh, Marge, I'm sorry. I guess you've had a tough day. Come on, you two. Daddy'll take care of you. <laughs> Bertie! <laughs> it's bedtime for the twins, Bertie. You take one and I'll take the other. Will you, Bertie? Yes, ma'am. Marge is a little tired. Well, Miss Marge, you just relax. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Come on, Ronnie, you plump little old dumpling. Let's go count sheep. Cha-cha, ah. Ronnie. Good night, Linda. Here we go. Ah. Uh, see if you can get them to sleep, Bertie. Oh, that won't be no trouble. Bertie will have sheep jumping over the fence just like twins. Two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a relief. Uh, that's right, my dear. Kick off your shoes and put your feet up here on the ottoman. You care for a part of the paper? Society section? No, thanks, Hunky. Let me see the classified section. The classified section? Yeah, there you are. Thank you. You and Bronco still looking for a second-hand sewing machine? Well, right now I'm looking for a job. A job? Marjorie, you're not serious. Yes, I am. I've definitely made up my mind. No, my dear. Did the events of the evening have anything to do with your decision? Well, of course not. I've been thinking about going to work for some time. You have? But Marjorie, Bronco makes a good living. But we can use the extra money. After all, we have a family. And someday we want a home of our own. One salary doesn't go far these days, Unky. Yeah, you have a point there. Uh, what about the babies? Well, they sleep most of the day, and Bertie's so wonderful with them. Yes, of course, you can depend on Bertie. 
think how much it had helped Bronco and the things we could do for the twins. Well, Marjorie, I admire your desire to contribute to the little family, but... I studied typing and shorthand in college. It's a shame to throw all that away. Yes, well... I get excited just thinking about it. Think how much it would mean to us. You're right, George. Marjorie, I admire your pluck. If that's the way you feel, you have my blessing. Oh, thank you, Uncle Mort. It's your life and Bronco's, my dear. Whatever you two have decided is fine with your old uncle. Oh, um, I haven't mentioned it to Bronco yet. Yeah, your old uncle, you haven't mentioned it to Bronco yet. Oh, he's coming now. I'll talk to him. Well, everything's calm again, Marge. That's what he thinks. It's just the calm before the storm. <laughs> Honey, sit down here by me. Uh, I don't know a better place. Well, I guess I'd better leave you two alone. Uh, no, you stay here, Anki. Uh, what's going on? Bronco, I was just telling Uncle Mort, I've decided to go out and get a job. What's this? I'm going to help out with the money. I'm going to be a secretary. A secretary? You? My wife? Uh-huh. You see, Bronco... I forbid it. Hey, what's going on? Now, wait a minute, Bronco. What does he forbid? What's going on here? Leroy, let you and I keep out of this. I don't know what I'm in. <laughs> Marjorie, I forbid it. Well, Unky thinks it's all right. He gave me his blessing. Mr. Gildersleeve, did you do that? You, well, Bronco... Hey, what's Unk's blessing? Regardless of your uncle, Marjorie, of whom I'm very fond, you're not going to do it. What isn't she going to do? Bronco, darling, I am going to. What is she going to do? I can support my family. I can pay the bills. Marge, your place is here. Is she leaving him? <laughs> no, Leroy, it's just a silly discussion. What's so silly about a man wanting his wife in his home? Well, you're right, Bronco. Uncle Mort, not two minutes ago you said what a help I would be. Well, that's right, too, Marge. <laughs> What's going on? Who's right? I don't know. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so, that's why I had to get out of the house, Judge. It must have been quite uncomfortable for you, Gilda. I never should have taken sides. I got trapped right in the middle. Well, it's hard to keep from getting trapped with a middle as big as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, please. This is a family crisis. Now, Gildy, you're exaggerating. It needn't become a crisis at all. Yeah, you don't think so? Gildy, if I were you, I'd give Marjorie a job. Give her a job? Me? Your secretary is on vacation. Ask Marjorie to take her place for a while. Say, that's an idea. It won't last. We all know Marjorie is a natural homemaker. You bet. She'd never be happy away from the twins. Well, at the time she made her decision, she was probably annoyed with her daily chores. As the saying goes, man works from sun to sun, but woman's work is never done. All right, George, I'll get Marjorie to go to my office tomorrow morning. You think it'll work, Judge? Well, Gildy, if you want her to become bored with office work, I can't think of a more boring office. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, Judge. you, Anki, but I really want a permanent job. Your secretary will be back next week. You will, Marjorie. Consider it a little refresher course. You can start today. Today? Sure. Yeah, I told you last night, but you'd gone to bed when I came home. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll take care of the twins, then get dressed in a hurry and go down with you. Well, there'll be a lot of work to do. I run a busy office. You better eat a good breakfast. Oh, I'm too excited to eat. Say, speaking of eating, where's Bronco? Oh, he'll be down. He's upstairs sulking. Well, I'll talk to the boy. I'm sure he'll go along with my idea. What's everybody so happy about? Well, good morning, Bronco. Oh. Good morning, darling. Don't you have a kiss for your little wife? Well. Anyway, I have one for you. Because you're the most understanding husband in the world. Oh? Why? I'll be ready in a few minutes, Anki. Uh, what goes on here? Hey, hey, Bronco. Mr. Gildersleeve, I smell a plot. Yes. yes. It's like this, Bronco. Since Marjorie thinks she wants to go to work, I decided the thing to do is let her start in my office. Your office? 
Mr. Gildersleeve, I am unalterably opposed to my wife taking a job. Yeah, but, Bronco, don't you see? The water department will drive her crazy. It apparently has its effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you bet. And I fix it so that before the day is out, Marge, you'll never want to see another office. Oh? Hey, listen, my boy, listen. I'm going to pile on the work. Yeah, I know it's a sneaky thing to do, but the result will be worth it. Well, it'll be worth it if it gets this silly idea out of her head. Sure, can't miss. I'm going to pour it on. I'm even having all the jolly boys call the department and make fake complaints. Peavy, Floyd, the office is going to be in bedlam. Hey, what's going on? It'll start jumping at 9 o'clock. What's going to start jumping? Good morning, Leroy. Hi, what's going to start jumping? Mr. Gildersleeve, the plan might work. What plan might work? You glad you agree, Bronco? Yes, sir. That's pretty clever. What's pretty clever? You meet me this afternoon outside the office. Yeah, I'll be there a quarter of five. Why are you going to be there at a quarter of five? The yeah, of boy, Bronco. I want you to be present when Marjorie throws in the sponge. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I have to hand it to you. Who's throwing in a sponge? <laughs> now, Leroy, this doesn't concern you. Okay, so it doesn't concern me. Things are going to start jumping. Meet me at a quarter of five. Throw in the sponge, but I don't get in on it. <laughs> Big deal! <laughs> Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm right on time. Yep, quarter of five. Let's sneak into the outer office and check on our little working day. <laughs> I tried to call your office today to see how Marge was getting along, but the line was always busy. Yeah, that's the way I had it planned. The Jolly Boys have been great. Good old PB phoned to put in a complaint about the service. Chief Gates even had a couple of his trustees call from the jail. Good for Chief Gates. Yeah, and Floyd, the barber's been calling all day using assumed names. There's the phone now. Water department. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait, Bronco. Uh, just a moment. I have the figure right here. September 1st, the water level at the reservoir was 45 feet, as contrasted with 38 a year ago. Say, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, the other phone is ringing. Oh, all right. Goodbye. Uh, Summerfield Water Department. Boy, is she busy. Yeah, what did I tell you? You say Mr. Gildersleeve hasn't taken care of that? Well, I'll, I'll attend to it right away. Well, he's out of the office a lot. Mm. I'll see that he gets the message. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. <coughs> oh, well, what can I do for you two gentlemen? Marge, aren't you ready to go home? You had a hard day, my dear? Oh, I've been busy, Unky, but I love it. <laughs> you do? I took care of all the correspondence on your desk. Say... You did? Uh-huh. And the phone has been ringing constantly. It's been more fun. Mr. Gildersleeve, she says she's been having fun. Yes, well, I... And Unky, your barber, Mr. Munson, has been so cute. He's called five times making complaints. Each time he gave me a different name, but I recognized him every time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, what have you done to my happy home? Hey, now, Hibraco, I... You know, excuse me, I'll get this one. You want a department... Floyd, get off the line. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Time to get fall wardrobes ready. And, of course, time for the youngsters to go back to school. And to you, Mother, back-to-school time means fixing really nourishing lunches to carry those youngsters through busy, energy-demanding afternoons. So if you don't have Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food Velveeta on hand right now, let me suggest you get some the very next time you shop. Velveeta is so nourishing, it's just the cheese food you need to slice or spread for hearty hot or cold sandwiches and to melt for its smooth cheese sauce. Velveeta is rich in those important food values from milk that every member of your family needs, especially the youngsters. And mother, Velveeta is one cheese food that's digestible, as digestible as milk itself, so even your little tots can enjoy it. And believe me, every member of your family will enjoy Velveeta with its grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. 
So make delicious Velveeta your handy helper, Mother, and make sure your youngsters have the benefit of a lunch that's not only good tasting, but hearty and nourishing, too. Get Velveeta from your grocer next time you shop. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta when you buy. Remember, Velveeta is the quality cheese food made only by Kraft. So be sure you choose the yellow box with the blue letters that spell Velveeta. Well, the customary harmony in the water commissioner's household seems to be at ebb tide. When Marjorie wanted to take a job and her husband Bronco didn't want her to, somebody had to step in with a solution. And who'd think the great Gildersleeve would come up with a plan that wouldn't work? Hey, Bronco, I did everything I could to make her dislike working at the office. Yeah, you know, I thought this would be just a passing fancy. Actually, I think Marjorie's place is in the home the same as you do. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd rather not discuss it. Bronco, where are you going? I'm going for a walk and cool off. Mm, youth. Excuse me, was that somebody coming in or going out? You're going out, Bertie. Bronco. Yes. What's Marjorie doing? She's upstairs having a fine time putting the babies to bed. Tonight, I thought she'd be bushed. Yes. Sir. Bertie, I have to think of some way to get things on an even keel. Yes, sir. Of course. I don't know why I'm worried about it. It's their problem. I did my part. You sure did. <laughs> you know, I had no way of knowing, Marge, you'd like the job. No, sir. You know, I'm not infallible. No, sir. You know, I'm no miracle worker. No, sir. Yeah. Might be a good idea if I went to bed and covered up my head. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, George. I've got to get Marjorie out of my office somehow today. Yeah. A little uncomfortable at the breakfast table this morning. I never saw a son-in-law with such a cold, fishy eye. <laughs> yeah, maybe one of Peavy's cokes will give me a lift. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Jellersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Yeah, I'll have a coke, Peavy. Yeah, well, I'll give you an extra large squirt. <laughs> well, why is that, Peavy? Well, I imagine you need it, Mr. Gildersleeve. I take it you're having a little trouble with your son-in-law. You uh, as a tempest in the teapot, Peavy. Uh, Bronco dropped in here last night and the pot was boiling. Who? <laughs> well, what did he have to say? Do you really want to know? Well, no, Peavy. Yeah, I realize Bronco's upset with me, but deep down in his heart, he knows I want to do the right thing. The boy has a great respect for me. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you better tell me what he said. Well, he said if Marjorie wanted to take a job and make the money, he just might give up his. Peavy, he didn't. He did, too. He said he was going to spend the morning in the pool hall. Oh, my goodness. And this afternoon, he thought he'd drift out to the college and watch the football team practice. Yelper, he can't do that, Peavy. It might not hurt, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know, sports are a fine thing to get a man's mind off his troubles. I was a great football fan myself when I attended Pruitt Pharmaceutical College. That's just my alma mater, you know. You, I know, Pete, I know. I wouldn't want this to get out, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I, I used to be a cheerleader. Oh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Megaphone and everything. <laughs> I used to stir them up, I'm here to tell you. They called me Pepper Peavy. <laughs> Pepper Peavy? Yeah, that name hardly fits now. No, I don't know. With a vivo, with a vivo, with a vivo, vivo, vum. Yofer. Johnny, get a rat trap bigger than a cat trap. Johnny, get a cat trap bigger than a rat trap. Peavy! Countable, countable. six boom, ba, poor pharmaceutical, ra, ra, ra. <laughs> Phew, I'm glad that's over. No, it isn't. We followed that with the double locomotive. P. R. U. I. Phoebe! Phoebe, stop! Oh, very well. <laughs> I can plainly say you don't care whether Pruitt wins or not. Pruitt, phooey. 
Goodbye, Pepper Peavy. <laughs> George, yeah, I'll settle this thing once and for all. Yeah, I'll just go in the office and tell Marjorie to go home. Tell her she isn't working out. No, I couldn't say that to little Marjorie. Yeah, why don't I just tell her the truth? That Bronco's a bum. He's just going to walk the streets and let her support him. Yeah, I'll bet that'll make her scoot for home. Hey, Marjorie. Oh, what is it, Auntie? Uh, Marjorie, in the best interest of everyone concerned. I think you better give up your job. Why? I'm enjoying every minute of it. Well, I hear from a reliable source that if you insist on working, Bronco's going to give up his job. Oh, he's sulking again, is he? Yeah, Marjorie, if I were you, I'd let him have his way. Uncle Mort, I love Bronco dearly, but that's the trouble with him. His parents have always let him have his way. And I won't tolerate a spoiled husband. You will, my dear. Let's look at it this way. Which way? Well, as a matter of fact, my dear, and this is difficult for me to say, I must be brutally frank. Yes, Anki? Well, I... Well, you're just not cut out to be a secretary. Oh, I'm sorry, Anki. What have I done that's wrong? Well, it's hard to put my finger on it. <laughs> I know you've enjoyed pretending you're a secretary, but this is business we're running. The big business. I thought I was doing all right, Anki. Yeah, I know that. Most inexperienced people think they're doing all right when they aren't. You know how the mayor is. He's a stickler for efficiency. And I have to see that he continues to get it. He's been pretty happy with the way I've run things. Am I interrupting things? Pat? You. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Gildersleeve. <clears throat> Marjorie, do you have those letters ready for me? Letters? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Here they are in triplicate. Ah, thank you. Oh, beautiful typing. Oh, thank you. And my secretary was a little rushed, Gildersleeve, so I brought these down to yours. I had no idea that your niece Marjorie was here. Yes, well, just filling in, you know. Nonsense. I've had some wonderful reports about your department the past two days. You yeah. have? And that's unusual, Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and look at your neat desk. This is the first time I've been able to walk in and see whether or not you were behind it. That's <laughs> <laughs> very amusing, Mr. Ray. I've been thinking, Gildersleeve, if uh, Marjorie likes this job, we should keep it permanently. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Anki? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Yes, indeed. Keep her around, Gildersleeve. Who knows? Someday we may have a lady water commissioner. <laughs> 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 What's so funny about that? <laughs> well, Marjorie's taking care of all the work on top of my desk. Let's see what's in the do it now file. Mm. It's been done. I don't have anything to do around here. Here are some letters for you to sign, Anki. Yeah, well, thank you, Marjorie. I was just looking for something to do. You, Marjorie, forget what I said about your work. The mayor's right. You're an excellent secretary. <laughs> I knew you didn't mean what you said, Anki, and I do love it here. Yeah, I know. But what about Bronco? Don't worry about Bronco. He'll get over his tantrum. Yeah, I guess so. He isn't so domineering. He lets you vote, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Anki. Well, I have a little more typing to do. Is the water commissioner secretary in? Well, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. Bertie was doing some shopping, so she stopped in to see our working girl. <laughs> yeah, she's the pride of City Hall, Bertie. Yes, sir. How are the twins, Bertie? Oh, they're fine. Mr. Bronco's home playing with them. Oh, he's a dear. Excuse me, Bertie, I have to finish my typing. Yes, sir. I want to see you work that typewriter. Well, there's plenty of time, Marjorie. It's only 3 o'clock. My, my, look at her fly. You don't mind if I talk while you work, do you, Miss Marjorie? Oh, not at all, Bertie. That's good, because I got to get on back home. But I wanted to tell you how cute the twins have been today. What have they been doing, Bertie? Well, you know how little Linda's been trying to stand alone? Well, today she pulled herself up for the first time. She did? I caught her holding on to the door and peeping around the corner. I think she was looking for her mother. Oh, Bertie. 
Yes, and she sure is a smart baby. But she's got to go some to keep up with that little Ronnie. He's going to be saying words any day now. Bertie, he isn't old enough. Well, you ain't there to see what I see and hear what I hear. Today, he came mighty close to saying a word. What did he say, Bertie? It sounded just like he said, Mama. Mama? That's you. Too bad nobody else was around to hear what that cute little boy nearly said. <laughs> Excuse me, Bertie. Oh, I'm just having a picnic with them children. And I'm the only one that's seeing all the first things they do first. Why, they're the sweetest, cutest. Hey, Marjorie, where are you going? Uncle Mort, you were right. I'm not a good secretary. Yeah, but Marjorie... I'm resigning, Auntie. You don't mind if I leave a little early? No, of course not. Oh, you've been wonderful. Goodbye, Uncle Mort. Well, she got out of here in a hurry. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty clever of you, Bertie, getting Marjorie to go back home. Me? Yeah, I'm on to you, Bertie. I'll bet those twins slept all day. They weren't going to stand up and say a word. Yes, say a word, Mr. Gillespie. In fact, little Linda came mighty close to saying, Unky. Hey, Unky, <laughs> you like my hat. Mr. Gillespie, where are you going? Bertie, lock the office. I'm heading for home. The Great Gildersleeve will be back with us again in just 30 seconds. Looking for a good food buy? Then get Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta is one of the best food buys you can make because Velveeta is not only delicious, but it's nourishing, too. And you can use Velveeta so many ways, in snacks, sandwiches, and for a variety of economical hot main dishes. Melt Velveeta for a smooth golden cheese sauce to extend leftovers or to use in new made dishes. Make it your handy helper for all kinds of money-saving hot meals. Get it tomorrow. Your best buy in cheese food, Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort! Yeah, what is it, Marjorie? Come upstairs, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ronnie said a word. He did. He hold everything. Here I'm coming. Bertie! Upstairs, quick! Ronnie's talking. I'm coming! What did he say, Margie? What did he say? Could you understand him? Oh, I was just as plain. He said your name, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, what a brilliant child. <laughs> Bertie, he said Uncle Mort. Oh, bless that little fellow. Yeah, now he's going to say it again. Yeah, aren't you, Ronnie? Yeah, and Linda's watching him, see? <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> Listen, everybody. Ronnie. Ah. You, Ronnie boy. Who's this? Who am I? <laughs> Tell them, Ronnie. Ah. <laughs> That's life. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Trenna, Lee Keel, Stanley Farrar, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs>